but we begin with another composer. Her name is Terumi Narushima, and she is not just a composer, she's a performer and a sound designer, and she's a lecturer at the University of Wollongong. She's currently a long way from Wollongong. In fact, she's about as far away from Wollongong as you can get and still be in Australia. Specifically, she's in the ABC studios in Broome, and she's going to perform for us an extract from a piece which she'll be doing as part of the Oz Asia Festival in Adelaide on Tuesday and Wednesday. Oz Asia started uh, on Wednesday of last week, and it's quite an ambitious festival uh, this year. It runs right through to the 20th of September, a whole range of cultural and culinary events in the Adelaide Festival Centre, and this is one of them. It comes from a show which Teremi Narushima has put together, um, it's called Yasukichi Murakami, uh, Through a Distant Lens, and we'll find out what that's about after we've heard some of the sounds of this piece. That's music by Terumi Narushima, and it comes from a show called Yasukichi Murakami Through a Distant Lens, which people in Adelaide can catch on Tuesday and Wednesday of this week. Terumi, thank you very much indeed for that. First of all, tell us what, what you were, how you were making those sounds. I was uh, playing an instrument called the bowed sultry um, and playing it with two bows. Right, and the armoury of, of sounds that you've got in this piece is quite extensive, actually, isn't it? And, and, and by no I mean, you know, if you think that the bowed psaltery is an exotic instrument, <laughs> you've got things that are much more exotic. Yeah, um, one of the things that I had in mind when choosing which instruments to use was the fact that we were touring this show, so they had to be small and relatively portable, and I thought... Well, bowed sultry is a little bit unusual. It's um, lightweight, relatively speaking. Um, and I've got a couple of other instruments. A um, flute that's just freshly been printed on a 3D printer, um, as well as a, a handmade instrument, a percussive instrument built from the springs from inside grandfather's clocks. Now, I'm sorry, before we go any further, I have to ask you how you print a flute. <laughs> this is a little uh, research project that I'm doing uh, at the University of Wollongong in collaboration with some uh, engineers and um, the experts at uh, our university in 3D printing. So um, one of my areas of interest is microtonal tuning systems. And the problem we have there is that there aren't instruments that can uh, accommodate a lot of the tunings I'm interested in working with. So that was the uh, the motivation for 
starting this project. That's the motivation, but I still don't understand how you, how you print a flute. <laughs> um, so 3D printing is catching on um, bit by bit and it's sort of making inroads into different um, areas. Um, the people that we're working with, I guess the areas of expertise include, um, it's, like a, it's like a regular printer, except instead of printing ink onto paper, we print ABS plastic not on not on a two dimensional plane, but on a three dimensional plane. Right. So you can actually print objects. Yes, but as long as they're made of ABS plastic. What we have at the moment is ABS plastic, but um, there are the facilities like printing in titanium. Oh wow! Yeah. <laughs> anyway, look, we're getting off the topic here somewhat, <laughs> aren't we? You should tell us about this fascinating man, uh, Yasukichi Murakami. Uh, who who was he? Uh, Murakami was a photographer, a uh, Japanese-Australian photographer, who was very active in Broome as well as Darwin um, uh, in the early half of the, first half of the 20th century. And it wasn't until the um, beginning of World War II, he was very act active up to that point, but with the beginning of World War II, he was interned like many other Japanese people living in Australia. And what, what was his significance as a photographer? There are many photographs that um, of his that appear in different uh, places, but are not um, necessarily known. Uh, what's the word? It's not necessarily um, attributed to him. Mm. And um, the project uh, Yasukichi Murakami through a distant lens was um, conceived by Mayu Kanamori, who is herself a Japanese Australian photographer, and she was very keen to go on a mission in search of um, Murakami's missing photographs. They went missing um, when he was interned. And has she found many? Yes, yes. <laughs> um, it, it, it's taken her several years and um, the play, the theatre performance, is um, about her search and where that takes her um, as well as reflecting on photography in a digital age. So when it comes to um, putting music into this piece, um, ha I mean, I'm assuming that the, that the play was written and then you, that you brought music to it. Uh, is, that, is that right? Or, or were you, were you part, of, part of the, the original process? Um, you know, the, the script was uh, originally written and um, over many, well, many months actually of development, um, music was written and the script would be um, worked on more. So, yes, I'm working basically from a script, but the development process was over many months. And, and, and did you, I mean, how did you decide what kind of sounds were right, apart from the fact that they needed to be reasonably portable instruments? One thing I was very um, conscious of was I, I deliberately wanted to choose instrument sounds that weren't your stereotypical Japanese traditional instrumental mm. sounds. And also with my interest in microtonal tuning systems, I wanted to be able to perform in non-standard, non-Western tunings. And yet, I must say, what you played on the Bode Psaltery a few moments ago, to me, sounded really very strikingly Japanese. Ah, uh, that's interesting. Um, the, the instrument is being tuned to um, a scale called metaslendro. If anything, it has... Um, some associations with uh, concepts of Indonesian scales. It's not specifically an Indonesian scale, but sort of in, informed by um, tunings of Indonesian gamelan. Um, but that's about as much as the link goes. Um, it's tuned with pure intervals. So um, quite often people, unless they're told, aren't necessarily aware that the tuning is anything other than what they're used to but hopefully using a slightly different tuning creates maybe a slightly different um, sound world. Yes, and, and I suppose it also creates a unique sound world uh, as, as well. I mean, if, you, if you're tuning things specially, you actually end up with a, a sound world which sort of wraps itself around this particular piece and gives it a particular sonic style. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons why I like working with different tunings. Um, really working with musical resources that haven't been used by other people in order to create a unique sound world, yes. hopefully. <laughs> yes. 
All right, Terry, uh, you're going to do something else from this show now. And perhaps before you do, maybe you should just tell us what, what you, are, we, are we going to hear the, th the, 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 the newly printed flute? Yes. So this is our, um, this uh, show has been the debut for our 3D printed flute. Um, it's an end blown flute. Um, we're working on um, a transverse flute as well as part of our research project. Um, seeing what happens if we adjust the position of finger holes and things like that. Um, but it's been quite a big uh, big achievement to get as far as um, this in terms of getting a flute that actually plays. Mm. Uh, so this is like a, 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 pr a newly printed 3D plastic shakuhachi, is it? <laughs> um, not quite a shakuhachi, but um, yeah, it's, it's an end-blown flute. Um, and the little excerpt I'll play is just a a segment that um, is part of the, the performance. Okay, thanks very much. And that was Terumi Naroshima, and she was playing on today's music show from the ABC Studios in Broome. And you can hear much more of her music in Yasukichi Murakami uh, through a distant lens, which is part of the Oz Asia Festival. And it's being performed at the Space Theatre in the Adelaide Festival Centre on Tuesday and Wednesday evenings at 7.30, the Tuesday performance followed by a question and answer session. And Oz Asia uh, runs through until the 20th of September. You're listening to The Music Show on RN Radio Australia and online. <laughs> 